everybody. Hello, journalists. First of all, shout out to your journalism. It's so important. We convey impactful pieces of public policy like this. Uh, my name is Representative Mary Ann Dunwell, and I'm sponsoring House Bill 109. Uh, we heard that bill this morning in House Judiciary Committee. There was a long line of proponents, Zippo no opponents. What this bill does, it does away with, it repeals any statute of limitations to prosecute child sex crimes. There should not be a clock on kids when it comes to justice. So this bill takes effect immediately. It's also retroactive if a crime committed is still within its statute of limitations. And there's a DNA evidence piece as well. If DNA conclusively links the suspect to the victim, that case can be prosecuted if the prosecution begins within one year. So I told my colleagues in House Judiciary, I'm not a judiciary, I'm not a lawyer, but I do know what I read in your papers and watch on your screens and, and radio that it's not okay that a perpetrator can circle a date on a calendar, post on Facebook, I'm off the hook, and sleep easy for the rest of his or her life. And that child victim into an adulthood is haunted for a lifetime. That's just not okay with me, so I brought this bill. We know that children often repress terrible, horrific memories. Another reason I brought this bill. They, those memories don't come out for decades. We also know cover-ups by our institutions can last for decades. So no more statute of limitations. Uh, I want to say we have a number of folks here very, very close to the issue uh, to speak to you. And I'm going to now step aside and let my colleague uh, talk about his bill, HB 202. Because I, I want to say my bill deals with the criminal code. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, and good afternoon. Um, as you just heard, Representative uh, Marianne Dunwell spoke on and, and introduced House Bill 109 today, um, which dealt with the criminal side of uh, this particular issue. The bill I'm carrying is House Bill 202, and so I'm going to speak to that bill. Um, but first, I want to say I think we need to be clear on one thing. Protecting children and families in Montana is not a partisan issue. I'm carrying House Bill 202, which would lift the statute of limitations on taking action against an individual who sexually abuses a child. It fully removes the statute of limitations on civil cases, which would empower victims of childhood sexual abuse to seek justice against their abusers in, in our court system. <clears throat> Montanans have seen firsthand the pain our communities experience when survivors are prevented from seeking safety and closure because of devastating flaws in our legal system. Behind me, to my left here, stands attorneys John Heenan, Dan Rice, and Bryant Martin, who are co-counsel on the case that recently rocked the Miles City community, and also, I would say, rocked the state of Montana. They're joined by me, by, with me uh, by Krista Newby, uh, her father, James Doc Jensen, who perpetrated these crimes, stands with, she stands with us today in support of his victims. My bill was actually spurred by, the t by a team effort to close this horrible loophole in Montana um, that shields abusers and allows them to walk free once they hit a certain calendar date, as Representative uh, Denwell just mentioned on the criminal side as well. Today, I think we as a society are more knowledgeable about how childhood trauma works and how long it actually takes a victim to recover from childhood trauma. And, and we know that each victim is different. Some of them take much, much longer time frames to come to grips um, to fully understand what happened. Uh, we know that youth 
oftentimes they don't know that what's happening when they're being abused as a child is even wrong until they reach their adulthood long and long later long later into their lives and uh, to cope simply cope with that and then get the courage to come out and speak on that um, often takes even longer so uh, from my perspective to, to put a time uh, like an arbitrary time frame on something whether it's 5, 15, 30, 40 year deadline on, on the survivor's ability to come forward is it's not only arbitrary but I think it's inhumane. My bill simply updates the law to reflect our current understanding of how childhood trauma works. My family, my family has given me permission to speak on um, in my perspective and, and all of yours an atrocity that happened to my grandmother when she was seven years old. She was um, uh, taken and put into the Ursuline boarding schools, uh, sexually abused as early as age seven, um, went on into her life and, and coped with that, uh, became addicted to alcohol, which we believe is one of the ways she coped with that, and never had justice on, um, against her abusers. And for me, this is, this is a way to seek justice for not only the victims in this case, my grandmother was not here with us anymore, and, and other victims who haven't had the courage to come out and speak on this issue um, today. So, I'd, li I'd like to now move on and introduce uh, John Heenan. He's one of the, as I mentioned, one of the attorneys, uh, co-counsel. He's going to speak firsthand on the importance of limiting uh, or lifting the, the statute of limitations so abusers can no longer tick down the years and wait for a get out of jail free card. So with that, I'll um, pass it on to uh, John Heenan. Thank you. Thank you, Representative, Thank you, Representative Marjo. I'm John Heenan. I'm here as a parent, father to four children, and the representative for 31 survivors of child sexual assault and abuse at the hands of a staff member at the Miles City High School. The statute of limitations in the context of sexually abusing children is a compromise. On the one hand, you have the interests in protecting children. On the other hand, you have the interests in protecting child molesters and pedophiles. I personally, certainly my clients, my co-counsel, and the overwhelming majority of Montanans stand firmly on the side of children who say, We'd rather support and advocate and go to bat for our children than go to bat for the rights of pedophiles and child molesters. And any statute of limitations, whether it be five years, 10 years, 50 years, any statute of limitations is an effort by those that enact it to protect child molesters. This is a new day in this state. Uh, it's time that Montana comes in line with the rest of the country. We've seen all these abuses across this state, across this country. It's high time that child molesters and pedophiles stand justice for what they do. And as I recounted this morning in the Judiciary Committee, when a 95-year-old Nazi was extradited to Germany and the foreign minister said, quote, there is no cutoff point for justice. These bills, sponsored by Representative Dunwell on the criminal side and Representative Morjo on the civil side, HB 109 and HB 202, are two sides of the same coin. On the one side, the criminal side, it's making sure that pedophiles and sexual offenders, uh, those that prey on our children, stand justice. They go where they belong, behind bars. The other side, on the civil side, is to ensure when these children that are abused become young men and young women and have the courage to stand up as my 31 clients have had the courage to stand up, as others behind me have had the courage to stand up, we're always willing to say that the courthouse doors, the doors of justice, are open to them so that they can be treated fairly and have the right to their day in court. So that's why I'm proud to be here and I'm proud to fully support not just on my own behalf, but more importantly on, my, on the behalf of 31 victims of exactly this type of conduct 
uh, who are trying to pursue their rights to justice, asking the legislature to come together. This is a bipartisan issue, uh, and this legislature has the opportunity to show that uh, they can still get work done and still do the right thing, and it starts with our children. Thank you. My name is Tara Walker-Lyons, and I'm an adult survivor of childhood sexual abuse, and I'm from Missoula, Montana. I became vocal about my story in 2015 when I was 25. I had shared my story publicly for the first time using social media. After my story had grabbed the attention of many Montanans, I was introduced to an, inc an incredible attorney who believed in me and who ultimately helped me to take my power back. She did so by helping me to file a lawsuit against the man that molested me. It was July 28, 2016, my 28th birthday, when my stepfather was served with my lawsuit. At the time, a victim's 28th birthday held quite a lot of significance because that was the exact same day that the criminal statute of limitations expired, which meant that justice was no longer a possibility for me. It was quite the feeling. The little girl that had, uh, that had been abused for so long had just balled her hand into a fist and finally swung back. In response to my civil lawsuit, my abuser's attorney focused on the statute of limitations and attempted to have my case thrown out. Because of the current law, a victim is only given three years after the realization of injury to file a case such as mine. Thankfully, their attempts did not work and my case was allowed to proceed. A year later, only one week after Governor Bullock signed Tara's law, I found myself sitting at a table across from my abuser in what's called a legal deposition. I sat up tall and strong and I watched as my attorney went to work. Over the course of an hour and a half, she relentlessly questioned the man that stole my childhood from me. In the end, I was left astonished, shocked, and I was near speechless after I had just sat and listened to this man admit on record what he, had, what he had done to me. That day, I was given my truth. I was able to lay down my sword, hang up my anger, and focus on my healing because I was no longer fight, fighting to proclaim that I wasn't a liar. A civil lawsuit that I filed against my abuser changed my life in so many ways, and every victim should have the same opportunity, regardless of their age or what kind of realizations they have made in regards to their healing. Representative Dunwell has introduced House Bill 109, which would eliminate the statute of limitations on criminal cases of childhood sexual abuse and if passed, could significantly impact my abuser's life by opening up the possibility for criminal justice. For that, I am hopeful. Representative Morjo has introduced House Bill 202, which would eliminate the time restriction on civil lawsuits, which means that victims across the state would no longer be unnecessarily restricted on how and when they choose to deal with their trauma. I owe both Representatives Dunwell and Morjo a great deal of gratitude as a victim of and survivor of childhood sexual abuse for taking on this issue in a show of force for victims across the state of Montana. I would like to urge our lawmakers to vote yes on these bills as they work their way through the House and Senate, just as I would urge a signature from Governor Steve Bullock if and when they reach his desk. Thank you. So with that, uh, so with that, that uh, concludes the press conference, and we can take questions from uh, media. Phil.
Bill, I can speak to the civil side of it. Um, the civil statute uh, revision to allow a lawsuit to be commenced at any time uh, would be retroactive um, and an individual would be able to commence, especially in this particular matter, would be able to commence an action. Um, we know that many of these cases go back as far as 30 plus years. Um, and so having the statute be retroactive allows those individuals to seek justice. I think one thing to keep in mind is that these cases still need to be proved beyond by a preponderance of the evidence, not by reasonable doubt, beyond reasonable doubt, but by a preponderance of the evidence. So, um, you know, they have to go in and present evidence and present their case. Um, there's other, there's other uh, affirmative defenses that can be raised by an individual in these circumstances, such as latches as well. Um, so, you know, we think this is the right thing, whether it's just for, for the individuals uh, victimized by uh, the athletic trainer in Miles City, uh, Mr. Jensen, but we think this is the right thing to do for everybody in Montana who uh, may have a story that they're waiting to, to, to tell um, to law enforcement so they get their day in court. One of the defenses that the school district has raised in, in my client's civil case is the statute of limitations. Uh, we believe that we're, we're okay in our case on that issue, uh, but it certainly will be uh, briefed and addressed by the court. And frankly, it's a hurdle that victims shouldn't have to jump over. And it's uh, a defense that ought not be available to the perpetrators of crimes like this. And so while we think, uh, we certainly don't think we need this change to benefit our clients in our case, uh, we think it would be a benefit, at least in terms of uh, saving on briefing. And more importantly, and what's incredibly important to my clients, is not just what happens to them, but what they can do to protect their children, their neighbor's children, uh, all of our children in this state going forward. Uh, stop the next James, James Jensen from ever happening. And, and you know, I, I'd just like to add what we heard from um, one of the proponents, uh, former justice of the Montana Supreme Court, Jim Nelson, was that, who was a proponent, uh, was that this could help thousands of Montanans today that have experienced these heinous assaults. And another stat is one in five uh, uh, girls, girls, of girls, are sexually abused in Montana. And one in 16 boys. So it, it does have widespread important impact. And Phil, just to add one last thing to that, um, in Montana, uh, on the civil side, there, there's case law supporting uh, legislation uh, that can be retroactive and go back retroactive on the civil side. Um, so we believe the law supports us on that front and we support us in Supreme Court of Montana. Is there any other questions?